Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. From Swift Current, Saskatchewan, this is Curling Stadium bringing you coverage of the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown. My name is Sean Murray, joined today by Mark Go. Mark, good to have you on board. Yeah, hey, uh, glad to be here. Glad, looking forward to this game. Yeah, so our match today is a B event semifinal between uh, Beth Peterson and Korea's Yun Jung Kim. I really hope I said that correctly. Apologies if I didn't. Uh, these two teams are having pretty good tournaments so far, each only on one loss so far. Peterson rattled off three wins to open, and actually one of them was against this uh, Korean Kim team, so this is their second time playing each other. That first game was a 12-6 Peterson victory. Uh, Peterson actually made it all the way to an uh, A event final, I believe. Losing to another Korean team in the field, that's uh, Yunji Gim. Yeah, this uh, this Peterson team uh, team has played well this uh, this weekend. Um, they do have uh, Robin uh, Silvernagel there uh, uh, playing skip for them. So uh, it's been a really good effort, right? It's it's, it's kind of inheriting this team and, uh, and making a run here. Two wins and one loss. Their first game actually was against this Peterson team. 12 to 6, but then they run off two, two wins after that and now find themselves still in good shape. Just some trading hits early on in the first end of this game. Seems to be pretty standard setup here. Uh, these uh, these uh, hits over on the wings are always a little bit tricky. I'm personally not a fan of them. I don't mind them so much. Just a matter of how how you throw them. They're they're a little a little more tricky to see depending on how you throw the rock. But the athletes at this level usually not a big problem. Yeah, pretty routine. Yeah. Hit, but we don't know if that's going to stay around, and if that rolls out, I expect uh, that guard is probably going to get peeled off. Sure enough. So, Mark, as you said, that uh, uh, you said that's Robin Silvernagel skipping this team. Is she uh, she been playing all weekend? I, I uh, wasn't aware of it. I, I believe so. Or am I, am I crazy? Maybe I'm thinking of something else here. I thought there was someone that was filling in this weekend. I thought that was Robert. It's hard for me to see actually from on the screen here. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll clarification on that because I'm making a pretty bold uh, call there, I guess. Well, we'll, we'll just go with uh, team, team Peterson for the time being until we can get some. Uh, Independent verification, perhaps. Uh, as it happens, Peel made successfully. So, Peterson definitely angling to flank this first end. Keep the hammer to the second end. Did get 
get some independent confirmation that is indeed Robin Silvernagel, who's been filling in as Skip on Team Peterson this weekend. So good, good call, Mark. You're, you're okay. okay. You're, you're just, driven. I'm trying to, like, you know, I'm trying to pay attention. There's, you know, uh, a lot of teams here, and I, I guess, I don't know, is this an early season thing where we see a lot of subs filling in? Because I feel like I've seen that quite a bit at uh, some of these early events. I don't know if it's earlier or late. Um, you know, really no one who curls at this level does so professionally. The money isn't really there, but you know, a, lot, a lot of us have to balance work and family. And yeah. you know, some some of them, it might be uh, I'm going to bank what made time off I have now, so that I can have it later in the season for you know playdowns, sure. whatever you have. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, now is yeah, that we did get confirmation. Yeah, so uh, it's interesting for you know Robin to be able to just kind of come in here and uh, take on uh, this team that I assume would be you know mostly new to her, right? So having to learn kind of tendencies and releases and whatnot. You know, I, I did watch some of their earlier games. It looks like there was just a you know a little bit of communication, extra communication, right? Just to make sure everyone's on the same page. And you kind of have to do that when you're. That's not your, your normal team. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit of a learning curve there, but I tell you, they, they obviously figured things out quickly winning their first three games. Getting, getting all the way to an A final. So that's a, a pretty good weekend by any measure. Oh, yeah. And again, pretty and, and pretty big field here for this uh, RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown. Is it, uh, I think it's like 20, is it 24 teams? Triple knock? It's actually 28. 28, oh gosh. Yeah, which, which is a, it's a little bit of an awkward number because you ended up having some teams have buys. That's uh, part of why, you know, here we've got uh, one team that's played four games and one team that's played three games. Yeah, uh, I believe team, uh, team Kim uh, got the buy. So their first game was against this uh, Team Peterson, uh, Team Peterson Blink uh, in their first game. Yes, that's correct. Kim looking to flip the results of that first game. That was a 12-6 Team Peterson win in that opening match for them. First shot, looking to hit, needs to roll a bit to get onto the rings. Yeah. Definitely doesn't want to nose this because if she does, it won't be on the house. Kim will just go right around it and maybe get a force. It does just get on the rings. It gets the job done. Yep. Yeah, this uh, this field's pretty interesting, and, and you see, uh, especially for this draw, uh, quite a few international teams. We've got uh, Team Yoshimura taking on Constantini, uh, then a Swiss matchup between Tiranzoni and Kaiser, uh, Team Ackland versus Team Rana, uh, Team Ackerman versus Team Ha. Then there is one Canadian matchup between Team uh, Team Barker and Team Howard going on this draw. Yeah, very, very internationally diverse field at this event. Lots of countries represented. You've also got uh, Germany's conventional field, which is not on the ice right now. Makes the hit. I'm not sure if it's on the rings. It's not. I just see a throw through, and they. Looks like it's off. Yep. So first, first end, throw through. It's not a bad idea to take a look at a line that you haven't seen. Sure. You want to get a read on. So. Keep 
keeping it simple. Yep. Here, and keeps the first end simple, just plays some hits, gets a blank. They'll keep the hammer going into the second end, and we'll have that for you right after this. and welcome to the 2022 Western Showdown, the largest international women's curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you've decided to join us to see some of the top female curlers in the world participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director of RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan and support of curling in our community, we're so proud to be supporting the Western Showdown for its inaugural year. RBC is committed to working with our community partners to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport in the communities in which we live. Thank you to everyone from the Western Showdown team for putting together this amazing event. On behalf of RBC, enjoy the tournament. So back to the second end. Team Peterson. Uh, no, no score yet. First end was blanked. Peterson holding the hammer. Center guard goes up. And, uh, Tim Peterson with Robert Silvernagel filling in as skip this weekend. Going to look to come around that. Do you like coming around here instead of throwing up the uh, the corner guard in the second end? So needs to, needs to check it out down a little bit. A little deep to the back forefoot. deep it also curls a little more and pokes out the other side so team Kim's gonna look for a quiet weight hit done now if you're <clears throat> if your team Kim there is there a good reason not to just kind of come down to it and, and try to freeze to it or well it, it might be that they prefer to keep things a little simple um, you can certainly make an argument for that if they're um, trying trying to force you know a freeze would be a pretty aggressive call maybe they would just prefer to Play a shot like that later in the later in the game, perhaps when they have a better read on the ice. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, and, and it's all personal preference. You know, uh, there are a lot of teams that would absolutely freeze in that situation. Yeah, um, but uh, this this has a similar feel to uh, how the first end started and and ended up because we 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 did, came in kind of partway through the first end and didn't see the first couple of rocks, but it was a similar thing we had. And the teams were trading hits, and then eventually a rollout led to appeal. So, very, very defensive start to this game. And, and yeah. some teams just prefer to uh, keep it simple for the first couple ends until they kind of settle in, get a read on the how the ice is running before they start playing aggressive shots.
save is made and does roll like out. That. Yeah, that's that's going to allow Team Kim a free pass to come around the guard, and, and this also may have been what they were uh, waiting for, kind of uh, trying to make happen is uh, get play away from the center and then hope for a rollout, and they get one, so they now have a free pass to come around. Yeah. I mean, it looks like they are going to take this uh, intern side with so they're gonna have to go just a hair wider than they would if they opted for the uh, for the out turn, but I guess they do know this line feel comfortable with it. Yeah, this is the same line they threw the guard on, so they should have a good idea how this runs. That's pretty nicely placed. Yeah, good separation and does cover it. Uh, pretty much all of it. You can see a little sliver, but it looks like uh, Robin's just going to go ahead and ask to, to peel the guard here. I think she might be even trying to play the run back the and double. get that one off the forefoot. Well, yeah, it's uh, enough of an angle that if you're pretty close, you're going to lose the shooter. So Just makes the peel, which is totally fine. Now they got a corner guard out there that they can use. Puts it back right where it was. So it's like the same call. Gonna try to run this back, pick that stone off. Makes it nicely done. Just came up enough at the end. Does leave their own out there now, so Kim is going to try to get around this. Advantage being, if this is buried, Team Peterson's going to have two of their own to potentially run in. Yep. And they do get the benefit that it's their own that they're running, yeah. So maybe a touch up here. Does just settle in the back of the forefoot, but even a little deep, that still is mission accomplished for Team Kim. They're they're forcing play to the middle, which is where they want it without hammer. The, the gear change from Team Peterson instead of trying another run back, which get which is a little more difficult because of separation. They're gonna get around there, yeah. Try to establish shot stone. Recognizing a, a blank is probably gonna be pretty tough this end, so let's make sure that gonna make sure that they can score at least. Try to go for two, obviously, but make sure you score at least one. Uh, this one is just a little bit out there, but. See how much of it gets to the rock there. Gets to it, but bounces just a little bit. There's there's room for Kim to get rid of that.
Mm, what did the sweepers jump this one here? Yeah, you hard get, low coals, yeah. You could get at least to the nose on this. Oof. Well, they don't mm. quite remove it, but still pretty much gets the job done. Yeah. Which is a far enough sit, too. You're probably not bringing that on the scoreboard, but probably did, didn't want to roll out any like they did, and that's going to give Silver Nagel a bit of a chance to roll in, perhaps. Yeah, no double there, really. You've got the... Yeah, that slash double just kind of rolls out. Yeah, I mean, you, you could make that slash double, but the shooter's gone, and then Kim's just going around anyways. So... There's 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 definitely room to get inside of this and roll under. You've got two guards to roll under. Yeah. That's well done. Pretty tough to, tough to do any better than that. That is completely lost under that center guard. With no, no real play at it. Kim's best option is just to come down and freeze on this and yeah. make any shot for two as, as difficult as possible. Um, do you think they can tap it maybe a foot just to get shot out of it? Or is... It, it might be there, but the, the risk in playing that is if you're just a hair heavy and you end yeah. up and you tap it, but you end up bouncing off, you might give uh, Team Peterson a, a chance at two. A well-placed freeze will make a two very, very hard. Final rock for Team Kim here. to work to bring this in. Yeah, this just didn't didn't yeah. quite have the legs. It just comes up into the twelve foot. So does complicate the draw a little bit. Uh, so Nagel is going to have to go out quite a bit wider, possibly into a new path because they have to get around that red stone. So speed is probably going to be different out here. Yep. See how it runs this wide. I, I was calling the game on this sheet uh, last night, and this line in particular, the rocks didn't really seem to want to finish all that much. So we'll have to see how it runs today. So final rock, second end. Potential draw for two, just needs to find a piece of the forefoot. Yeah, it's just kind of floating out there. And we'll see if this hangs on. No. Nope. I don't think so. No, nope. just a little strong out of Silver Nagel's hand. It's going to be just a single point. But it is the first point of the game, so Peterson leads one to nothing after two ends. Uh, Team Kim of Korea will have the hammer in the third end. We'll have that right after this.
Underway with the third end. Swift Current Saskatchewan. This is the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown. This is a B event semifinal between NG Kim of Korea and Team Beth Peterson, uh, skipped by Robin Silvernagel. Peterson couldn't quite make the draw for two last ends, so only got one. So this is uh, Team Kim's first time with the hammer in this game. They like to play the come around of a center guard with their first. Yeah, it looks like we'll get to see maybe more rocks in play this end now that we're getting to the third. That may be, and it also might be that uh, we've seen... Uh, Team Kim's call so far tilting a little more towards a defensive, the, the way it's been so far. They, they might choose to get a little more aggressive with the hammer in hand now. That, again, is a, a stylistic preference of uh, some teams. Keep it simple without the hammer and push a little harder with it. That come around slides well deep and leaves Team Kim sitting shot. Uh, yeah, a couple of questions here. I mean, you can make a play to uh, make a case to just draw down to that back one and kind of secure one in the rings here. Um, you're ever, you're not ever throwing a corner at this point, right? No, the way the way this is shaping out, you all the play is kind of focused towards the middle. That's that's one of the risks you take as a team with hammer if you choose to come around the center guard. Uh, if you want to have a corner guard in play, you kind of need to throw it early on. But, uh, electing to bring a second one around. Really don't want to go down to the backing, because that's going to give backing for Team Peterson to get one in there sure. themselves, and they could cut out both Red Kim Rocks. This one is coming in nicely. We'll get around that top Eight top twelve rock. That is pretty nice. Kind of like that, perhaps a foot higher, maybe, but still pretty good where it is. And forces a tough freeze out of Team Peterson here. Uh, this one seems to be floating a bit on them. Uh, there's the break point and starting to move. I don't know if they're going to get to the inside. Well, moves it behind the T line and sits shot. So pretty good. Would like to have not rolled off quite as much as they did, because it's going to give Team Kim a chance to remove this. Be very careful not to overthrow this one or else it could track and potentially jam on the one that was just tapped. Yeah. Uh, it looks like they're taking a good amount of ice, so I would expect to see softer weight. Well, this one looks a little up. move here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, nice shot. Yeah, it looked like it was a little up out of hand, or maybe the sweepers I thought indicated it was the case. That, that didn't miss the guard by much, didn't miss the top eight red by much, rolled inside and sits three, and now yeah. uh, Peterson having to bail a little bit. He's getting messy. Trying to run this guard back. Oh, oh boy, that's that's, that's kind of worse worst case result, right? Yeah, you don't make contact on any of the rings, and yeah, you kind of leave a guard there, 
Yeah, your shooter just stays. That's that is some trouble. But it's also as team with the hammer, it's nice you're sitting three behind the guard, but everything is in the middle. So it's yeah. now it becomes a question of you know, how how do we not you know dig ourselves into a hole here? It looks nice, but just one well placed freezer draw by Team Peterson, and they could take the entire end away. Yeah. So if you're just looking at this, right, like it's it's really just accessible from this outturn side. So is that yeah? So we can see where uh, they're tapping, and it looks to be that they're going to put something either top four or top eight. I I would think even just top twelve would be fine. Yeah. Uh, you you you'd hate to try and go top four and end up. <laughs> T line or just back four, and then you oh, just get yeah. all kinds of freeze possibilities. Absolutely. But yeah, the, the attention definitely has to be on this side because that the the two that are in front of the T line are really helping them, but their stone that's behind the T line back four there, that's the one that's hurting them, and that's that's the one that they actually have to cover up. So. Top twelve, maybe get a nibble of the eight. You don't need to sit four necessarily. Yeah, it's just just about taking away that freeze. That freeze is the best out for Team Peterson right now. Uh, looks like we got uh, quite a few people in chat asking about this uh, Team Peterson rink. Uh, yeah, once again, skipped by uh, Robert Silvernagel this weekend. Uh, and there is a different team. Uh, this it is a it is a rink that is uh, going to be based out of Winnipeg, and uh, there is a team Peterson that's based out of the U.S. Team Tabitha Peterson. Um, as one of the high performance team, uh, recent representative at the the last worlds. So uh, yeah, so different team. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think team team Patterson's added an event this weekend. I don't believe they are. But yeah, this is this is this is a uh, nominally team Beth Peterson. Who yes. I believe was at a recent Scotties as a wild card team. Yeah, oh, Manitoba-based. Nice. Um, uh, Pete Peterson herself, not at this event. Uh, being skipped by Robin Silvernagel. Uh, looks like Sweeper's calling in for T-Liner back four, which is... Oh, boy. Bounces off and sits third, but yeah, pretty open here. So if you are Team Kim, right, you don't necessarily want to flop inside, right, because that just leaves that re that makes that kind of landing spot a little bit wider for them to freeze to, right? Well, it, it kind of depends. If you can ever flop completely on top of your own and have five just lined up right in the middle there, that's yeah. That's pretty good. I mean, yeah, I that's you know, true. like like that's that's a situation I think any team will take. But you, you kind of have to do that. You know, if you knows it, well, then you've just given Peterson something to, to use there. But this is this is obviously getting really pretty scary for Team Peterson right now. I mean, they yeah. they don't have the hammer, and uh, Koreans have. Four stones just lined up in the middle, all behind the guard. I think this is the last of thirds rocks here. This is the first thirds rock. Oh, is it first? Oh, wow. Yes, okay. I believe so, yeah. Side flip. Oh, got a little bit, but there's there's space, but yeah, there was room, but man, oh man, Team Peterson better make this one. Yeah, if, if they don't, it, this this could turn painful quickly.
Nothing like you're throwing your third's last rock and the other team is sitting five yeah. stacked behind a center. But you still are one good shot away from really getting out of this mess. Asking the curl here. Does need to get to the inside. So that's pretty, pretty. That's that's pretty, pretty good. good. Yep, that's that's really nice. Taps it just a little bit. Sits shot, and now how does how does uh, Team Kim get that out of there? Uh, yeah, I guess they're gonna have to start peeling this 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 top guard. Yeah. Yeah. The idea here is. Uh, open up their own that are in the house for some kind of a raise later. But that is now a that is a lonely lemon in a sea of apples. Yeah. Wow. This, uh, so after a couple of uh, safe ends by both teams, we've got a uh... Real interesting one brewing here. Yeah, both teams really throwing down here. The, the best thing that Team Peterson can do here is the, the, the perfect shot would be if they could ever tap that one up just a foot or so and get it right in the pocket of those two in the back. It's yeah. never going anywhere. Or you could also just freeze like they're motioning and line it up right onto there to where any kind of play is just going to put it in that pocket back there. So that, that last shot, that third's last shot that they just played was really an end and, and, and a game saver too, I would say. Yeah, this looks to be ice for the, for the tap, yeah. So probably we're looking for like maybe back eight, back line weight. Oh, I don't think you even want to throw. You just need to move it a foot. You could you could get away with back four. Oh, okay. And, they, huh. and yeah, there, there's there's not not a lot of finish on this on this line. Uh, like I was saying, I I called the game on this sheet last night, and this uh, this outturn going away just stones never really seem to finish all that much. So it doesn't look like much ice, but I think it's pretty close. Uh, first, it skips rocks here. short so we're gonna see this little slash here yeah, this is this is tough I actually think you need to slash the top four stone I don't think the angle is there to hit the high one no because you have to almost get to the get to the low side or the right hand side of the rock yeah well if you're doing it that way I guess you know well if you, if you try to drive the top one into there there's no way to you're, you're sending the yellow back onto your own no matter what, so... Yeah. I think... You could try to catch just a tiny piece of your own top four stone, but well, you really can't see much of it. No. But I think it's worth taking a rip at. Yeah, no, absolutely. The, the absolutely reward is shot. great, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're never going to hurt yourself, really. I mean, I guess you could say if you miss this, then... I mean, if you're making contact with this... You're probably poking the yellow out, right? So it's not like you're ever picking long, out this red clean. No, there's no way to pick the red clean. You're you're either making the shot that you called, which is catching just as much of this top four red as you can see into the yellow, or you're actually taking your own off the top, yeah. which is going to open up this slash anyways. Yeah. So as long as you make contact with something, don't just buzz by the reds totally. There's your Team Kim will have some kind of chance for a multiple score. This is going to be pretty close here. Oh, I think she's got it. Oh! oh. oh man. <clears throat> so close, but kind of sneaky in the way that they 
just poked that one out of the way, and it's still in the house. So yeah, now. One, one shot left for uh, Peterson. They're thinking, what do we do with this? They're going to throw in another guard. Yeah. Yeah, unless this guard's thrown as like a one, you're... Are we probably going to see Team Kim just run that uh, oh, I, Peterson Rock into the into the red? I can almost floor? I can almost guarantee you that uh, a run back of some kind will be attempted because you've got so many of your own in there, and if it's missed, well, you give up a steal of one. That's really risk versus reward. There is yeah. definitely worth it. Some situations like this, uh, a lot of times you'll you'll think, well, my best guard is second shot, but there's really nowhere to put second shot. Yeah, here. You, you can't and, go anywhere there. Yeah. Yeah, and if you if you try to like come in and freeze and it overcurls, you give her the same shot she tried, and that could that would be for at least three. Yeah. So, or if you uh, freeze on the outside corner, then you're just slamming it. Oh yeah. And that, that would be the worst. So really, it's just about. Throwing up a guard and hoping a little bit. All right, so we're definitely over. Now it's just a matter of fact of the uh, getting the line here. I think that does the trick. Yeah. Now it's just a question of pick which one you want to run in here. Oh, and what you want to do with it. That's that's pretty good in that it cuts off the slash that they try, but it's high enough that it makes this this kind of run back just really difficult. But yeah, I, you, so you, you, you got to try this. Have to try this. Basically, nose. Yeah, just nose, or maybe just a hair on the low side. But yeah, pretty much nose here. Uh no no yeah nose actually I mean, just right on high the, yeah right on the nose is pretty much perfect. Well, we can definitely take the blank out of the equation here. <laughs> I I think the blank was gone a long time ago for sure, but it's be interesting to see how this one pans out. It's Probably going to be either a steal of one or a score of potentially as many as five. Yeah. Last rock for Team Kim. Having to go hard on the sweep here. Uh, on and off. So pretty close here. Does get to Oh, look at this. Wow. What a shot. Doesn't quite save the one in the house, but heck of a run back there. Picks up a big four points. Big risk reward shot there. So going into the fourth end. Team Kim has a 4-1 to lead. We'll have the fourth end for you right after this. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Western Showdown, the largest international women's curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you've decided to join us to see some of the top female curlers in the world participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director of RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan and support of curling in our community, we're so proud to be supporting the Western Showdown for its inaugural year. RBC is committed to working with our community partners to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport and the communities in which we live. Thank you to everyone from the Western Showdown team for putting together this amazing event. On behalf of RBC, enjoy the tournament. Back now for the fourth end from Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Team Kim with an amazing long run back to pick up four points. Well, well thrown, well called. 
Uh, yeah, for, that's a heck of a shot. You know? for Team Peterson, it's, it's not panic mode at all. They've got the hammer. They're only down three. I mean, you, you, they they really didn't play that in too badly. They made a really nice freeze midway through, and guards were well placed. And uh, a shot like that, you know, you did all you could. You just tip your cap and say, "Hey, great shot." Yeah, absolutely. Uh, down three here, and uh, having hammer in the even end definitely, uh, definitely some deuce, you know, force possibilities to get right back into this game here. Yeah, just set up your corners. You know, you'd be it'd be nice to get you know three if you can, but just make sure you get two. There's plenty of game left. Peterson with Robin Sovernagel so we're going to skip this weekend not not going to be fooled into going to those stones in the middle they need offense they're going to make use of that corner guard while it's there uh, sweepers kind of backing off this one here so this might be just a bit firm And it is going to settle. Well, it's in the rings, mostly covered, but quite a bit deeper than was desired. Yeah, I can't tell if the if that's second or third rock here. Uh, if it's third rock, do you have to make a play at this, or? Uh, well, you can't peel the guard yet. That's the that's the, yeah. the concern. You could probably, you could try for a quiet wait, like a just a hack wait to get it out. And that way, if you tip the guard a little bit, you won't push it out of the rings and you actually, could actually spill your shooter in as well. Yeah. I suppose might as well, yeah. Because you can probably, even if that is third rock, you can probably, you can double those other red ones out if you're uh, Team Peterson here, so... I think this is worth playing. I mean, it, it sh should curl enough that as as long as you're through the hole, you you should you should be able to get to this and make contact. like that it didn't look easy that definitely was not the winner of this B semifinal will take on the winner of the uh, another B semifinal between Abby Eklund and Isabella Rana and that match will be at uh, 430 Central should be the draw right after this one I believe we draw a little bit heavy but uses the backing settles in for second shot Uh, this one looks like it's moving quite a bit early. Yeah, 
Now that made an early move and wrecked on the guard. Still sitting second shot back there, so now Interesting decision here, right? Because uh, not a great place to, to roll anywhere, really, with this. Yeah, because you don't really have guards to work with. And you know, so now, without guards, you kind of have to make use of what's in the rings. And, and this, this freeze is a good call. Yeah, no, I, I think so, with the, with the current situations. Pretty much the, uh, the best option for them. Something else you could maybe think about would be uh, coming around on the other side, around the stone in the 12 foot, maybe kind of trying to hide a little bit behind that. But either way, you just want to, you want another one in the house at least for sure. And this one is. Coming up a ways short, settles in for fourth shot. Yeah. Uh, no reason to chase this double or chase this one in top 12. Just hit, kind of hit the open one here on the left side, yeah? No, because that, that one in the top 12, that's that's actually kind of a guard. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Team Peterson's going to have to make a play on that at some point, you, you figure. Exactly, exactly. So... This, this one back in the back is a little simpler. Oh, I say that, and they are looking at it, but... Well, I think they're looking at the yellow double, but that seems off. Yeah, the yellow game. double, that seems... If you ever hit that tooth, man, you're... Yeah, that's that's the bad, right? If you, you hit a tooth, then you're, you're hitting off the side of the red, and you can end up possibly stuffing it back on the, the one on... The center line here. Kim went up and looked at it and said, mm, I don't like it. Well, let's yeah. do this instead. You're just trying to clear this. You're not, you're not trying to hold the shooter. Just pick it out. No mistake. Yeah, that. I think they were initially looking at this kind of split on the on the yellow there, and just kind of roll towards the rings here. But uh, I, it's getting late enough in the end. I I do think I like dealing with these reds in some way. That that yellow corner guard is, I mean, it's way wide, but it is still usable. So I I, I like this a lot. Hit and roll, and you might jam one and leave a red around, but that's okay. You can you still have shots to remove it later. But you have to hold this in the rings. Uh, yeah, miss, miss Q on that one. You really couldn't afford to roll out. Yeah. So we'll just see, I guess, just a little hit and flop here. Don't necessarily have to cover all of the, the shot rock, but... Yeah, and you could also just nose hit it, too. Yeah. At, the, at this point, it's really just about you know, sitting the two, or I, or I guess it'll be sitting the three, and uh, having the force on. Yeah, nicely done. Yeah, very good. And also keeping play way away from that Yellowstone. Well, 
So looking for the double. Hold the shooter in the rings. The way this is set up, I'd say best outcome for Team Peterson now is to hopefully get a blank out of this. Yeah. Uh, this one's hanging out. Or this is both. Uh, this looks like it's rolling out. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was just a little bit wider. I, I heard a heard a whoa right out of her hand. Yeah. So just a little full of the broom, another rollout. And those will just those will kill you every time. Now for Team Kim here, uh, it looks like they're initially going to maybe try to put something back uh, on top of that stone. Or, I mean, I think it makes more sense to kind of sp split the rings here and really just ensure the force is on. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're in good shape to force either way. It's it's really six of one, half dozen of the other, whatever yeah. they're comfortable with. I, I I think I like I like splitting the rings as well. It's just it's just about not setting something up that uh, Team Peterson can use. And be careful not to go behind the T-line on this one because otherwise give them something to freeze to or hit and roll sure. in front of. So I, Ideally, you want to be level with the shot stone. Same depth. You can be a little bit higher. First, it skips rocks here. Uh, out of hand, the sweepers wanted to go, but then has to come off. Now back on. Just a little bit more to get it to even, and that's well done. Yeah, that's right where they wanted it. Now trying to think of some way to possibly manufacture two. It's 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 an uphill battle to say the least. Yeah. And you could freeze in some way, but if you try to freeze and you're only third, and they just guard, then what do you do? Looks like they're gonna. Robin's gonna try freezing on the shot stone, okay. uh, angled a little towards the center line, so that any attempted hit will maybe bring a jam on both of these reds into play. This is obviously a really tough shot. Yeah, but uh, this is. I mean, yeah, gosh, this has got to be pretty much it, right? There's the the only other option I could think of would be to try a hit and roll off of one of these and see if you can roll sort of half under one of the yeah. other reds. Try to dare them into picking it and maybe you get a miss and they pick their own. But I, either way, it's really, really tough. Is this and through actually, the hole? They're not... Okay, well, I guess they were... I guess the freeze wasn't the call. Yeah, I... <sighs> that didn't thought... seem like a lot of ice for that hit. No, and especially with that turn too, right? Like, uh, wow. Yeah, I mean, okay. the, the the broom was on the rock. That did that just didn't seem like a lot of ice. So, obviously, things not going the way that they wanted on that one. In any case, all right. So, just put it where you want here, I guess. Uh. What's, what's ideal here? Just like kind of top eight, maybe close well, to the center think, line? I think if you were to go uh, center line half four foot, just put a yeah. wall in front of the button. Like, you, you've got shots for one, but really scary ones. Yeah. Final rock for Team Kim here.
Uh, Sweeper's going hard on this one. I think we're going to be short. Definitely not short of heavy. the desired outcome, but we'll see if they can even get a biter out of this. One of the harder shots, just draw to the open house. <laughs> but uh, they do get a pass after you know making that uh, making that shot in the previous end. So yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I think it's okay. She gets a pass, yeah. And honestly, she could have you know hogged this one and still be happy with the force here. So final stone, Robin Silvernagel looking for the hit. Needs to roll on this to get in for shot. Uh-oh. Uh, outside sweeper trying to work it in. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Yeah, just, just a series of, uh, series of unforced errors there from Team Peterson. That's going to go in the books as a steal of two. Team Kim now has a... Fairly commanding six to one lead after four ends. We'll have the fifth end. Team Peterson's going to need to get the offense working right after this. We just got our shipment of logos here in for our next event, which is going to be the mixed double. As you can see, there's a few of them. There's roughly 20 logos per sheet to be put in for the mixed doubles, along with a couple of extra little dots. But all our logos come from Jet Ice. They are the best logos to put in. We use them around the world and they're very easy to install. As you can tell, this is the center ice logo that's gonna be going in for the world. This is about a four footer by 10. It's gonna look like a million dollars. Their colors on their logos are always nice and vibrant. And like I said before, very easy to put in. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we're everywhere because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares, always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Okay, back for the fifth end. Team, Team Kim and Team Peterson. Uh, kind of a rough, rough fourth end for Team Peterson. They uh, couldn't really get much going. Uh, a series of rollouts. Had a flash, flash hit as well. Leads to a two-point steal, and Team Kim now in full control of this game, leading six to one. Yeah, I kind of sub kind of surprising, you know. Uh, you know, uh, Robin's a very, very good skip. So, kind of, uh, kind of surprising to see. You know, on the uh, on her first, uh, I was kind of surprised to see the ice for that hit. And then, um, I didn't even see where they put the ice on her second one, but I just assumed it was, you know, right in the bad spot. But maybe just, uh, I guess, overthrew it a hair. Oh, and now we've got the peel of shame. Yeah. And this, <laughs> and this, and this is when. Team that is ahead, leads first call is in the rings, and they throw a guard. And then the skip says, sorry, I don't like that. you got to peel your own guard. And of course, that's legal. Even with the free yard zone, you can do whatever you want with your own rocks. And up five points, the, the last thing you want is center guards. So that's just the way it has to go sometimes. Uh, I see someone asking in the chat about this game. Uh, if they, uh, this is going to be, I guess, semifinal game. So they'll have another game. Uh, if 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 they are able to win this game, uh, they would yes. go on to a B qualifier. They, they uh, would go on to a, a a B a B final match. B and final. That, would, that is, and that would be at uh, that would be the next draw time. At a, I think 4:30 Central Time. 4:30, yeah. And and yes, they win that game, then they are in the the, the playoffs. Oh, perfect. Okay, so uh, if they hold on this game, then they'll have another one uh, in roughly three hours from now. 
to uh, to advance to the playoffs. So Ferrer was asking in, in chat again. And even the loser of this game will still have a, another life. This is a beat, uh, triple knockout, so it'll only be the second loss. The loser, loser will fall to a uh, C semifinal. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting to me, uh, you know, being just kind of a recreational curler. Um, you know, I'm used to the normal to to the format. Is you basically you get a three game guarantee, and once you get to the third one, losing you're out. Um, you know, like I, like for instance, at Bun Spa, I was at last weekend is you know that normal format. So uh, nice to see these different formats, and uh, I'm glad that I'm able to just kind of go to curling zone and click on standings and kind of visually see the brackets and see where. You know where the winners go, where the losers go. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you're really in, in a, trip, a true triple knockout. You're you're not eliminated until you've lost three games, until yeah. you get to the uh, the money round, the qualifiers, and then it's single elimination. So a team could easily win their way through the A side and be undefeated, and then get in the playoffs, lose their first game, and then they're out. And they're out. Oh wow, yes. yeah. So yeah, once once you get into the money round, the playoffs, it's it's all single elimination, no matter how many games you've lost at that point. Uh, some discussion here. And talking about what best to clear. I mean, obviously you want to you want to simplify up five points Let's yeah talk about how best to do that um yeah i mean do, do you run the yellow corner into into the pile and hope to hit something you you could but at the the other side of the coin is do you really need to you could yeah. just single peel um there's there's just there's enough rocks in play that and all of this right now is actually problematic. I mean, even though they're they're shot and they have one in the middle, it's just it's it's too many rocks for a five point lead. So, yeah, we're talking about is it worth trying to get rid of more than one? Because you'd feel awfully foolish if you tried that and ended up you know pushing an opposing stone under a corner guard or something. Yeah. So they're going to elect to peel the the tight one that's just nibbling the top of the house. Nice and simple. Yep. You, you don't need to get too crazy trying, you know, doubles and triples and all that kind of stuff in this situation. Just as long as you, you know, make make one go away every time you throw, you'll be in good shape and you can limit the amount that your opponent can score. Can't bounce it here. Ooh. Ah, doesn't quite get to the ring. It's just... I mean, you got to peel the double peel the ones on the the right hand side from the from the hack, yeah. Well, well, uh, do you? I mean, how how are are you talking about hitting the outside and? Driving it towards the center, making it that way. Uh, well, because then the concern is, well, the one you're hitting might careen towards that red, or if you hit the one in the house too fat, you might just spin that one completely under the other corner guard on the side. Yeah. So just single peel. I think just single peel. Yeah, just yeah. like this. Yeah. I mean, again, the the double is nice sure. if you make it perfect, but there's a lot of ways that can go wrong. You could jam it and leave it there. You could bounce it and leave them sitting shot. It's, it's, it's just it's just not worth it. Keep it simple. Just run off one rock at a time. 
Ooh. Well, I'm not sure they were actually calling <laughs> it that, but <laughs> that's the spicy that one, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this one's got plenty of, uh, plenty of room by the guard here compared to the last one, and weight appears to be better. Worried about poking out the other side, but should sit in just fine. Pretty nicely done. I'll just run this guard off. Now, if you play this out, this is where the five rock rule can help a team that's behind generate a three point end. You play this out. This is peeled. Peterson yep. goes around the other one. They can then peel, or they can hit the one in the house, but then Peterson goes around the guard again. Okay, no mistake. Yep, and right on cue. Looks like Robin is going to go ahead and go underneath the corner. And again, to here, to me, it does look like tight ice, but uh, again... Uh, based on what we've seen earlier and what you've seen in the previous draws, this should be right. Oh, she's asking for more ice as soon as I say that. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's not there's not a ton of finish, especially late on these, like we've seen, like you might see at yeah. some other events. They, they it, it does curl, it's just not a huge snap. Now, Sean, when you're skipping and you know the ice is, you know, pretty tight here, do you find yourself more often than not telling them, no, this is the right ice? Uh, you know, at this level and these kinds of teams, uh, the thrower is going to know how they throw, and they're yeah. going to have a sight on it. And most of the time, if they're asking for a little more, it's it's as much that they think they'll make the shot better, but it also just helps them see the shot a little better. And if it helps them get more comfortable in throwing the shot, then I, I have no problem giving them a little more little mess size if they ask for it. Uh, they do get a little bit of a break there, because I think that was actually taking more ice. It uh, was not the right line, but they did rub off the, uh, the red and kind of roll to a decent spot there. Right. But, uh, yeah, so it does get in for a second. It's not quite buried, but uh, Kim is just going to hit the open one. I'm going to go hard to make a curl. Just Ooh. gets off of it. I would have liked to keep the shooter in, but... Best place as far as securing two. I think going behind that center situation is awfully risky. Because in order to get decently buried under that red, you're going to have to maybe yeah, slip yeah. a little bit behind the T line, and then you're opening up a freeze possibility. But you might not see Kim play that even if it's there. She may just hit the one she can see and concede the two. She's more than happy to concede two. Yeah, I think giving up two is just fine, yeah. Even if she does give up, uh, end up giving up three this end, worst case scenario, she'll be up two with the hammer playing the sixth end. Uh, sweepers are calling this to be around T line, so uh, it is coming down, asking it to curl and kind of carve it in under cover here. Plenty of room here. Will they get this buried? Mm, I really don't think so. 
saying there's just there's just not really much in the way of late finish on, on this ice. That one's probably easier to hit than the other one. You can see all of it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think. Now with the situation here, um, and at this level, are you are you going hard for this kind of like inside flop here, or oh, are no. you just happy? Oh no, no, there's no need to go hard for an inside roll because the only way you give up three is by wrecking on that red, or or flashing obviously. But uh, yeah, no, all th th their concern here is making sure this goes away, and uh, ideally, you do that and you stay for shot. But even if you just hit this and roll out, that's completely fine. Yeah. Final rock for Team Kim here. Yep. Does make the hit. And so uh, Team Peterson skipped by Robin Servernagel this weekend. We'll have the hit and stick for two. Yeah, if the game was tighter, you might see them attempt to uh, to get that roll. Yeah, to try and get a roll, and even just get a roll half under. But with a five point lead, it's it, there's just no need to take that kind yeah. of risk. So last stone, Team Peterson, just looking for the hit and stay to pick up two and close the deficit. This one's definitely a bit tighter, but more weight, so it should be okay. No mistake. Right there, Team Peterson picks up two and narrows the deficit to a score of 6-3. to three. Team Kim is going to have the hammer and a three-point lead for the sixth end, and we'll have that right up to this. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Western Showdown, the largest international women's curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you've decided to join us to see some of the top female curlers in the world participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director of RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan and support of curling in our community, we're so proud to be supporting the Western Showdown for its inaugural year. RBC is committed to working with our community partners to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport in the communities in which we live. Thank you to everyone from the Western Showdown team for putting together this amazing event. On behalf of RBC, enjoy the tournament. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. And we are back um, in the sixth end here between uh, Team Moon Jung Kim <coughs> out of South Korea, ranked ninth in the world, <laughs> taking on Beth Peterson, skipped by Robin Serenagel this weekend. Uh, they are ranked based out of Winnipeg, ranked 47th in the world. Uh, Team Peterson uh, gets back with a deuce this previous end. Um, so closes the gap quite a bit, but... Still some work to do. Uh, Team Kim with a three-point lead here with Hammer uh, in this B event semifinal. Yeah, nice for Team Peterson to uh, manufacture that two last end. But uh, down three, no Hammer sixth end. It's it's a 
it's an uphill battle for sure from this point. Yeah. I have to go pretty hard for the steal. And, uh, team, team Kim pulling off a decent decent tick. Get that one over to the side. And this one... Oh, well, I thought it was going to end up in the rings here, but it does end up just short. Yeah, I think this event has a um, has a no tick rule, just only in the extra ends. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Production had mentioned that to me earlier, and I think this is the first event where I've heard of it, right? And where they would do something, uh, something like that. Hits that one really hard. If it touches the bumper, it goes back oh, oh the perfect stick <laughs> it's one one of the things that works against the, the the team whose stone that is is typically ice way back there is almost unused and the stone will be coasting along and it hits that and it's just like sandpaper oh yeah it's just dead and, yeah and it'll just grind it'll be good and it's like oh it's hitting the board and then it'll grind to a halt and stop half an inch short Yeah, I'm, I'm still undecided on what I think about no-tick rules in general. I, I'd be lying if I said I was totally a fan of them. It feels to me like you're, all you're doing is penalizing players for making good shots because the ticks are never simple. But I understand the, the desire to increase offense and give teams that are behind a chance because leads at this level have gotten really, really good at making those tick shots, and I get it, but I'm still – I, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's an imperfect solution for for the problem of right that you're at this level, um, you know, in, in in the last end or an extra end, uh, a team makes a tick and uh, it's essentially the, the game feels like it's over, right? And you know, want to uh, want to do something about that. And this is the you know current proposed solution, and I, I don't hate the idea of it. Um, you know, I was watching a game earlier today where they played a tick in one of the earlier ends, and, you know, I can definitely appreciate it. It's weird. I appreciate it in the middle of the game, but when I see it at the last end or an extra, I'm just like, oh, it's over, you know? Yeah, yeah I can hear that. So, yeah, and that's that's kind of why I really enjoyed watching the, uh, the Scott McDonald rink uh, a few years ago. Um, because they were playing a lot of ticks in the, you know, in the middle ends there, just to kind of get rocks in play and, you know, create funky angles. Well, and I, if memory serves, I can, I believe it was uh, some years ago when uh, Lisa Weagle still played with Rachel Holman's team. I think uh, they were calling ticks in the first end. The other yeah. team would throw a center guard and, and Weagle would throw a tick in the first end. And he was really good at it. So it's, and they made it work for them. Oh, well, absolutely, yeah. Just a succession of peels. Later in the end it gets, the less likely it is that uh, Team Peterson's going to have a decent chance of stealing. Sooner or later they're going to have to go around that stone on the side because it's all they have. And yeah. their, their, their best chance for potentially stealing a point now more than likely is going to be trying to make Kim throw against two and yeah. hoping for a miss. Yeah, I'm curious if they're ever going to, if that's going to be drawing around that one or if they ever split uh, the one off the side there. I know the splits on the sides are pretty tough here. So, I mean, yeah, I think you have to go center here for a little bit and waste rocks, but... Uh, thinking ahead, I mean, is, is is that ever a call? Splitting that one on? 
Hmm. That's th- those are pretty tough shots. Yeah. Um, pr- probably your 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 best thought, and unfortunately, this one slipping as deep as it did is does bring a double peel in play. But you get a couple more center peels, then you go around that, and then either Kim peels the one that's guarding that, or they just put one in the house somewhere, and then you hit it, or you draw and sit your two, and then you know it's it's out of your control at that point. You you, you need a miss to score. Is this a hair? No, no. Ooh. Ooh. Yet another stone still barely in play, but went way off in the weeds on the side. Yeah. Guard placed much higher this time. Yep. Just looking for the single. Got, got to be a teeny bit careful of this shrapnel that's on the side. Yeah. I expect with Robin's first stone up coming here, she's probably going to have to go around that have to. corner guard. Okay. okay. Well, gets away with it. Yeah, I think I heard her saying I don't mind going around right now. Yeah, that's what I thought they would do. Um... This looks like a lot of ice for it, though. Well, I, 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 th- I think the call is actually another center guard. And honestly, you're down to your skips rocks. I, I don't really know what that gets you at this point. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess maybe she's hoping... Team Kim will just draw around that, you know, and go top eight or something. But I suppose. Yeah, but I mean, it's she's. Yeah, she's well, not gonna I mean, fall for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean she's ne- never going in. Doesn't need to. But you peel this off, and then you're going around the side one. But, and then you're hoping that Kim misses a draw, basically yeah. the full eight plus a couple inches. And sure, I wouldn't. I wouldn't exactly bet money on that happening. And again, that just may be a stylistic preference, you know. Sure. There's, there's a call, but um, you know, just personally in this situation, I would be trying to make the other team look at two on their last one. Mm-hmm. No problem with the peel. Yeah, because I'm actually, yeah, uh, if I'm thinking, if I'm Team Peterson, I almost like two cracks at this this come around draw, you know. Right. Or if it's like half buried, and you know they have to think about it, but the, with that peel, it's just pretty straightforward. So Robin Silver Nagel's final stone of the sixth, and for a. Come around to the tight corner guard. It looks like there's an awful lot of room here for this. Now switching to the, the sweep side. Oh, I don't think this is going to get anywhere near buried. No. Well. Just double checking to see how much you can see, but uh, you got all of it. And then <laughs> some. 
tell you, you can. Uh... I think they're just double checking, making sure they can't uh, stuff it somehow on that one on the <clears throat> on the side that was ticked over. But yeah, I should be able to get this pretty easily to peel it out and get their blank. Final rock for Team Kim here. Looking for the blank. Oh. She sticks for one, and, you know, there are some teams that will take the one, and yeah. that's actually going to be handshakes. So uh, Team Kim is going to pick up the win over Team Peterson, skip by Robin Silvernagel by a score of 7-3. to three. And uh, Kim is going to advance to the B event final and they will play the winner of Abby Acklin versus Isabella Rana at uh, 430 Central Time and that's going to conclude our coverage of this game uh, Mark good to have you on again thanks for yeah. working with Absolutely. us and uh, for uh, Curling Stadium this is uh, Sean Murray signing off from Swift Current Saskatchewan the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown on Curling Stadium